Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to video one on our series on employment and the employment process. Uh, interviewing for the gig, and by gig, that's the musician term for musicians term for a job, right? Staying employed I and mean, other important things to know, right? Now, obviously, we're thinking, okay, Mr. C, Mr. C. Why are you talking to us about how to get a job? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, we're only in middle school. We're in the eighth grade. Well, yeah, right? But if you listen to my other videos, right, We and you've been in class with me, we've already presented the idea that we're not too far away from holding our first jobs. In fact, uh, when I see some of my former students um, out and about in the um, uh, working world, and, and I've seen them at Chick-fil-A, I've seen them at Burger King, I've seen them at Belk and J.C. Penney and, and some other places. One of the things that I'll ask them is, of all the lessons that you remember me presenting to you and presenting to you in class, which one stood out the most? And they will tell me each time the one on getting a job. All right, so hopefully you could take something from this. Now, if you're not in Mr. C's class and you're watching this video, hopefully you could pick up something from this as well. So let's get the ball rolling. All right, so as um, far as the stuff we got to take care of, right, uh, this does conform to state standards. So our big ideas are going to be, what does it take to locate and secure a job that could be part-time or full-time or to become employed? Okay, employed means you work for somebody else on employment. You're a regular employee. Okay, this doesn't go for contracting. All right, this doesn't go for, you know, hey, I'm working for my uncle's brother. Okay, you know, you, you, your dad, right? Your parents, right? This is the real deal, Holyfield. All right, and what can I do to stand out from others seeking to be employed? This is going to be really important, especially in an area where it's highly competitive. To become employed and by highly competitive i mean what are you going to do to stand out from all the others who are competing for that single job all right and in some cases you might be competing against somebody who's 18 or 20 years old so what kind of skills can you bring as a part-time employee that maybe they don't have all right that's something you got to think about all right so our essential questions what are some current trends and obstacles or things that get in the way in regards to obtaining and keeping employment hmm, that's a big one right uh, there's a lot of things that i found that a lot of um, uh, students and young workers and young employees just don't know what is the typical hiring process and how is it structured we're going to cover that and each business is different so you're going to have to keep that in mind which skills and performance potentials, okay, because we can't say aptitude yet because we're not working yet, but we'll call it potentials, do I possess for the workforce, all right? Um, you'll have to think about that, and we're going to talk about looking at your personal skill set here shortly. What leadership traits and qualities can be demonstrated in the interview process and for use on the job? Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, a lot of the employees that are out there are looking for leaders, whether they're self-starters, whether they take the initiative, right, or they have various leadership or outgoing qualities or characteristics, okay, they are looking for those types of individuals. So you need to figure out what leadership characteristics you possess, even if that leadership characteristic is always doing the right thing and working hard, all right? Um, and which communication skills can you further develop to make you hireable and desirable in the workplace? All right, we're going to talk about that. All right, so let's get this thing rolling. Employment, here's what we're going to look at, all right? We're going to look at planning before your search, all right? What you need to think about before even going out there and looking for your first job. We're going to look at searching for and locating potential employment, okay? You're not going to be hired by the first person you interview with, okay? Chances are, all right? We're going to look at applications and the application process, and we'll talk about the various way, ways applications are done. We're going to look at the interview, all right? We're also going to look at what to reasonably expect as compensation, okay? That's really important, and a couple of laws were just put in place that change a lot of the things that I'll present to you today, but it goes for the time that this video was recorded, which is November of 2020, all right? And then guidelines to live and work by. 
By the way, even though this is recorded in November 2020, a lot of the things I present in this video are still valid um, and have been valid for years. It's just the methodology is a little bit different. Or how you apply or might be a little bit different, etc. All right. So here we go. First thing, planning before your search. You got to plan. You got to have a, an idea of what's going on. Look, you just don't go and say, you know, I want a job today. Right. And you go out and look for a job. Okay. No, 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 no. That's not how it works, right? Does a person who builds houses, do they just say, you know what? I'm going to build a house today and I'm just going to go and just do it, right? Or do they have a plan that they follow? Okay. Well, you got to have a plan. First things you got to figure out is what kind of job are you looking for? That's really important. All right. So are you looking for a full-time job? Okay. And a lot of employers will consider full-time uh, if you work 35 to 40 hours per week on average, okay, full time. Now they might say 33 hours or what have you, but the basic rule of thumb is 35 hours to 40 hours a week, all right? Part time job is up to 35 hours per week, okay? Now some jobs might say, oh no, we counted at 30. Well, that's fine. That's on their job. That's their, that's their thing, right? But part time is included up to 35 hours per week usual rule of thumb okay so if you're working less than 35 hours a week chances are it's part-time okay uh so example if you're only available to work four days a week four hours a day right at 16 hours you're going to become part-time employment right that's part-time work if you're available for seven hours a day okay and um or on be on the schedule for seven hours a day uh, five times a week then you're nudging closer to that full-time position okay so you also got to think about, are you looking for regular employment or maybe just seasonal employment? Okay. And, and regular employment just means exactly what it sounds like. Once you're hired, you're going to stay on board for as long as they need you or until they get rid of you or until you find something else, right? That is regularly employed. Okay. And a lot of businesses out there, that's what they hire. Okay. Example, the average fast food joint is going to be working for, looking for regular employment. Okay. Or maybe when the movie theaters open back up, they'll probably be looking for regular employment. Okay. Makes sense. Or if you're working at a hotel or something like that, regular employment. Okay. Now, seasonal employment is exactly what it sounds like. It's based off of the season. Okay. Now, think about what seasonal employment might look like. All right. Well, you could think of maybe you're working as a lifeguard at the community pool. Okay. If you're working as a lifeguard, you have various training and maybe some licenses or some certifications with you, right? And so that seasonal employment will be during the summer, during the peak hours when the pool or community pool is most frequently used, okay? Especially if it's an outdoor pool, right? People aren't going to be going to the pool in the middle of winter, right? Makes sense. However, a lot of retail businesses, say like Best Buy or Target or Walmart, will often bring on additional part-time or full-time help for their peak season. Now, when is peak season for retailers? If you're thinking the holidays, you nailed it, all right? Yeah, that peak season is usually from uh, November through December, okay? Um, and so they need additional help during that because that's when they get their most shoppers in the store and they need the most help, okay? It makes sense, okay? If you're working for construction, chances are it's going to be regular employment. So I hope you get that idea. So you got to figure out what are you available for? Then you got to figure out what does your schedule a lot for? What can you do? Okay. Or if you're going to be working full time, great. Does your schedule a lot for it? If you're going to be available part time, what does your schedule a lot for? Okay. So you got to start thinking about various responsibilities. All right. And when I say responsibilities for your first few jobs, are you still in school? Okay, if so, you have responsibilities you got to take care of at school, your education first, right? And then you got to start thinking, okay, am I involved in extracurricular activities such as band or sports, etc.? Is there home life you got to consider? Example, do you watch after younger siblings, okay? Or uh, is, are you always needed because your parents are maybe working at night and you're not available to work? And during the uh, uh, afternoons or evenings, okay? You've got to start thinking about those things, all right? So you got to think about your various responsibilities, okay? You also have to have rest and time off considerations, and that's a big thing, right? Look, if you're in band, okay, and you're participating in marching band and so on and so forth, that's going to take a lot of time after school. 
are you going to be run down and are you not going to be able to focus on your schoolwork okay while you are employed conversely are you not going to be able to give your full effort all right because you're too tired while working on the job okay Man, you just got to think about that all right um look if you like playing video games and you want to spend your nights playing video games okay and you stay and you're one of those all-nighters who are up playing whatever latest video game is okay until two o'clock in the morning and you want to continue doing that maybe the job isn't right for you so you have to make a sacrifice you either work or you play the video game okay you got to make the choice but school should always be your number one priority while you are in school okay that's pretty simple all right all right so you got to have those rest and time off considerations all right what type of job are you looking for and we're still talking about our planning stage so you're still thinking okay when am i available what responsibilities do i have now i'm thinking all right what type of job am i looking for all right there's a lot of competition out there for employment, right? A lot of competition. And what I mean by competition is uh, there are people who are, say, maybe 18 years old or 20 years old who might be applying for the same job you're implying, uh, applying for, right? So you got to start thinking, what does the current job market mean? And what can you do to offer great skills to the employer? So what makes you different or advantageous to uh, hire? Now, if you're thinking, Mr. C, I don't know then you got to figure that out, okay? Now, if you know that you have really good work ethic and you pick up on things really, really fast, well, fantastic. Maybe you could make that a point to uh, mention, okay, during the interview process, right? Um, but yeah, what do you bring to the business specifically? Are you service-oriented? Are you concerned with others? Do you like making people smile, okay? Those are things that you could talk about, all right? So uh, you got to start thinking about that. Also, you got to think, start small, aim high. Start small, aim high. You know, Mr. C's first job was uh, working at McDonald's, and I worked in the grill. That was not the very glamorous job, all right? And, um, you know, I was a slow person back there. So it fit me that I would work back there in the back, and I was always taking care of essentially grilling the burgers and making the chicken and deep frying certain things and what have you. That was my job, okay? And I was fine with that, okay? There was nothing wrong. It wasn't glamorous. I just did it, okay? And then as I grew, I learned more and was able to apply myself further, all right? So chances are your first job is not going to be working for the doctor or the lawyer or someone else. Why? Because chances are the doctor or lawyer is not going to be looking for somebody who is, you know, unqualified for the job, all right? It's plain and simple. They have limited resources, and they want to make sure that they have highly qualified individuals on staff because of the nature of their business, all right, so you have to have a goal and be flexible. You're going to start at point A, go to point B, C, D, work yourself up. In other words, where do you see yourself in three years, in five years, in 10 years? All right, you got to start thinking about that. And then you got to start th thinking, all right, you know, there's a skilled workforce out there. And by skilled, that means they have different skills and trades that, you know, make them competitive, all right? They have various certifications that they bring to the table, right? We just talked about that, like the lifeguard who has a... Um, certification to work CPR, okay? So they're CPR certified, a highly qualified or high qualification for a person working as a lifeguard at a community pool, okay? Um, and miss, um, uh, other classes here might offer various certifications or when you get into high school, you might have certification opportunities. Do those relate to what you're trying to do and apply for, all right? What kind of hard skills, what kind of soft skills do you bring to the table? All right. We haven't had a chance to talk about them yet, and I haven't created a video on that yet. But basically, hard skills are the things that are measurable that you could easily prove, like you could type a certain word per minute, or you have a license, or you have a certification, right? Where soft skills means um, the various traits or qualities that you possess, like are you a good listener? Do you follow and take direction well? Those kind of characteristic things. So you got to start thinking, what makes you competitive? All right. Are you a positive person? Are you a sad person? Are you easy to get along with? So on and so forth. And then you got to start thinking, what can you do to develop those skills? You see, Mr. C wasn't always the best communicator and vocal communicator. But as soon as I started working in sales, I started figuring things out and how to communicate ideas and present information. And I became quite good at it. OK, and there you go. I mean, when I was 18, I didn't even like answering the phone. OK, and now I can have a conversation with anybody if I chose to. Right. It's easy. OK, I developed those skills. There you go. All right. Um, you have to start planning and creating your resume and CV. 
Resume, not resume, but resume. Okay, a resume is defined as a short document describing your education and work history. It might also include your list of achievements, or it is a short description of um, things that have happened. Okay, usually a resume is an eye catching document indicating your skills and experiences to potential employers. Now, here's the catch. All right. <sighs> High school teachers think that you need to have a resume to get your first jobs. Mr. C disagrees with that. Okay, Mr. C's experience and work in business, all right, and other uh, things that I've done in the past say that that is a load of hooey. Okay, however, however, if you are someone who's highly involved in middle school, in high school, right, and you have enough to create a resume, then absolutely create one. It will help your cause. But look, as an employer, okay, when I used to hire people and I'd make hiring decisions, if somebody was coming in out of high school, I wasn't expecting a resume because I know their work experiences weren't limited, right? So I was looking for other kinds of skills. Are they willing to listen? Are they willing to take direction? Can they show up to work on time? Can they follow direction? Okay, those are the things that I might be looking for. All right. So those are things that you might want to take note of on your application itself. All right. Now, there is a difference between a resume and a CV. All right. CV stands for curriculum vitae. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that last word right. All right. But curriculum vitae. OK. Um, or vitae or whatever it is. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is what it is. Right. It's CV. OK. Uh, CV is a very detailed description. OK. Of your background, qualifications and previous work experiences. It is a lot more detailed and may take up two to three pages okay where a resume is designed to take up maybe one page maybe two depending on your experiences right it is typically sent with a job in uh, application and is an indication to the employer um, of what uh, your life accomplishments and experiences are all right so the difference here okay is a resume is short sweet to the point and eye-catching a cv is very detailed all right extremely detailed a lot of information on there right and um if you look at the powerpoint i left at the link for you that you could click on at the bottom okay now your first job may not require that you re include a resume all right so um a couple places you need to look at all right or consider looking at all right um searching for and locating potential employment here you go job postings job postings okay um the days of going around and asking people hey are you guys hiring is kind of long gone all right unless they're just not listed etc okay a couple of the mom and pops will accept that so on and so forth right but those days are pretty much um, gone all right uh, when i say mom and pops i'm talking like the small uh stores like ed and barbs or um, small mechanic shops or what have you okay um, so job postings are found in local newspapers or published online uh, the newspaper is not used so much anymore okay um, so uh, entry-level positions and government listings are typically posted in the newspaper okay hey we're looking for a secretary to work part-time okay or a bookkeeper okay those are found usually posted by the uh, small mom-and-pop organizations and small mom-and-pop businesses right um, they also um, might list in newspapers uh, jobs with higher rates of turnover. Turnover is not that fruit snack that you get from some fast food restaurants, okay? Turnover means that they constantly go through employees. They come in and they leave. They come in and leave. It's called turnover. Uh, restaurants, fast food restaurants, and so on and so forth have high rates of turnover, okay? Because maybe they employ a lot of teenagers in, in high school. And what happens when the teenager graduates in a few months, okay, or in a year, okay? They got to they gotta go somewhere else, okay? That makes sense, okay? So high rates of turnover, okay? Uh, however, those postings can be good for part-time jobs, okay, and first jobs. Now, internet listings, all right, can be uh, included um, in that list, all right? And these internet listings are listed for all levels of employment, the seasoned veteran, if you will, those who have had lots of work experience and those with little work experience, all right? Now, you'll notice here on the screen, okay, I've kind of got several different um, uh, websites that are frequently used by people who are looking for jobs. Um, again, your first job, you may not rely on this, okay? Uh, but you got Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Career Builder, Monster, Snag a Job, so on and so forth, okay? Those are for your seasoned individuals. You're probably not going to find your um, local jobs and local gigs 
in terms of part-time work there, okay? Now, if you go in and ask somebody at Chick-fil-A or something, hey, are you hiring? Depending on the business, they might hand you an application or tell you you can go online and fill an, uh, an application there, okay? I'll give you another example. You go to McDonald's and ask for an application, okay? Their stores here on 90 and the one off of 41 will direct you to a website, all right, in Tallahassee, McDonald's website in Tallahassee, where you apply, and then there you go, okay? So there, again, uh, it really depends. You just have to know the, the various areas, okay? Um, so there you go. You just have to search. If you can't find it online, go to the store and ask them. Sometimes you can go to their websites, all right? And I'm fixing to show you that process here, okay? So yeah, websites are preferred by a lot of uh, different businesses individually, okay? Example, um, you can go to the Publix website, okay? And I believe you could apply there now. It used to be you had to be on their kiosks in the store, and that still might be the case. So you have to check out Publix itself. Uh, Home Depot is one of those. Chick Fil A's are one of those, and then the Career Source. So to get there and navigate there, you would go to their web page. So like you go to Home Depot.com. You want you're 18, you want to work at Home Depot, right? So you go to Home Depot, okay? And usually you'll find a careers link either on the top or the bottom of the page. Sometimes if you don't see careers or something or employment or something like that, right? Uh, you might have to go to the web page and click the About Us section, then go to Careers or Employment, all right? Sometimes it's on-site. Sometimes it's in-store. Um, sometimes it's, they're only say, hey, we hire through, you have to go to this store. Like, if you want to work at the public, I'm sorry, at the Target Distribution Center, you have to go to Career Source Florida and apply online there, okay? That's just one of their rules that they have, all right? Uh, each place is different, okay? You can also listen to the word of mouth of individuals. Word of mouth means, hey, somebody told somebody else that somebody said that they're looking for a job, all right? Um, or this place is hiring, right? And, you know, quite frankly, I head down uh, 90 all the time, and I see the signs, hey, go to snag a job, we're hiring, um, employment interviews, interviews on site on this day, all right, and there's nothing wrong with those jobs, okay, um, and again, they're just hiring a mass of people for one reason or another, and there are also various state and government websites, so that brings me to the end of this recording, and I believe that I have answered all of these questions, Ah, yes. All right. So you have to do some critical thinking, okay? Um, but other than that, I think that, uh, yeah, um, we covered all this information. So make sure you stick around for video number two in our series, and um, we'll look at what it actually takes to fill out the applications. All right. We'll catch you on the next one.